What's up, y'all? It's Beam Tech Reviews here with another video. Here to give you updates on the iPad Pro 11 inch M2. So, I put it in this little composition notebook case. Pretty cool, I would say. But this video is about how I use my iPad Pro, how it's been holding up since I got it. I think it's been 73, 73 days since I made a video about unboxing it. So how has this bad guy held up? Well, let's take it out the case. So this iPad Pro M2 sadly did not include the mini LED like the M1 iPad Pro 12.9 inch. Apple still being cheap. Apple, I'm not dissing you. I know you can do better. I do love your products. Uh, I've been tempted to go to Samsung many times, but at the end of the day, I'm all about what works well and together. And features are great, but do I utilize them all every day? Probably not. Just like how I barely use this Apple Pencil and I try to find ways to keep using it. But I do, such as drawing, writing, things to do, and having that feeling of satisfaction of checking off a to-do list and having a way to lock my notes with the Apple Notes and having encryptions in there while writing important stuff or work and stuff like that. Very capable and great device and stuff like that. Um, when I held the L iPhone, iPhone, the iPad 12.9 inch, I thought it would be heavy, but it's still just as light as this iPad Pro 11 inch. So as a matter of this, the size and the screen, holding it like this is more comfortable in landscape mode, I would say. Obviously, if you're holding a screen that's about up to here, that's 12.9 inches and this length, it's still comfortable, but when I want to use my thumbs across the screen, that's when it might make a difference. But other than that, I'm not really seeing, I don't know. I kind of missed the 12.9 inch. Like I said, the 11 inch is light. It's easy on the hands to carry around. I do use it at work. I do have my 16 inch MacBook Pro. I take to work with me sometimes when I need to be on the go doing stuff with scheduling and emails and other things school counselor related but sometimes I just bring my 11 inch ipad like to professional development meetings i would just bring this thing because it can do things that my macbook can do with safari since it lets you use safari in desktop mode automatically chrome and edge you can still use on desktop mode but you just have to enable it while safari just naturally does desktop mode which is cool uh, i tried using stage manager on here <laughs> 11 inches really isn't enough to do stage manager comfortably, I'd say, because you still really can't size the windows how you want to if you're using like Samsung Dex, for example. If you're using something like Samsung Dex, it's pretty much like Windows. You can size the windows, put them wherever you want. With stage manager, you can kind of do that, but it still has its limits that I'm not really comfortable using on the 11 inch. Granted, if I was using a 12.9 inch iPad, I'd be comfortable doing that because there's more screen real estate to use. So, I mean, so stage manager on the 11 inch isn't really ideal. So just being real, I'm sure people can find ways to use it productively. But for me, stage manager is not very ideal because the screen is just too small. It is what it is, but it is a beautiful screen. It does get very bright. I do enjoy uh, working on here and media consumption, editing photos, sketching, uh, writing to-do lists, journaling. I do enjoy doing that on this screen. It is big enough for that. It is comfortable for that. But obviously, if you're drawing, more screen real estate is always nice. If you're writing and journaling, more screen, is, screen real estate is always nice. But if you're reading bedside, this is probably going to be more comfortable for most people. And 12.9 inches is comfortable too, but it's probably going to be more comfortable as it's smaller and more compact. And yeah, and it's the screen is still very vivid, high resolution. Texts are really crisp. If you're reading on here and doing stuff like that, we're reading a manga or a novel book. All that is fine on here. YouTube is fine on here. Watching movies is fine on here. Very color accurate or vivid uh, screen. It's capable of Dolby Vision, obviously HDR videos and stuff like that. My only thing that I do miss from this whole point nine inch is the speaker quality. On the 11 inch iPad Pro, the speakers are not as powerful. Like it really hurts, it bothers me because the 12.9 inch, I could turn the volume at halfway and it's loud. It could pretty much uh, 
the whole room can be amplified with sound. I don't know why I can't find the word for this, but pretty much you can, uh, the whole room can hear at half volume. I don't know why it's not, I can't think of the word. I'm having a huge brain fart. It's been a long day today. I just got off work not too long ago. It's been a long day, so I can't think of the word. But you can fill up a room with sound, basically, at half volume with the 12.9 inch iPad Pro. This guy, the speakers sound great. I will play a royalty free video right now with sound. Royalty free video music. So I'll play this real quick. And like at half volume, it's loud in a quiet room, but at half volume at 12.9 inch, it's you can fill a whole room with sound. This is about 60%. Oh, let's do about 75. Now it's at 50%. You know how you notice how quiet that just got? 65. So basically my point is you need to be at like 75% volume, 70% to actually be enjoyable and somewhat loud. It'll be loud, but it's more enjoyable like at 65, 75% range. On the 12.9 inch. 50% you're good, fill up a room of sound. This one, not so much. I'm very disappointed in the quad speakers and the iPad Pro 11 inch because I the 12.9 inch just spoiled me. But anyway, Apple Pencil is great on here. I love drawing on here, sketching, stuff like that. I do use Procreate. Procreate is great. I drew something like this on here, you know, it's cute. Or you could draw, or I drew another thing with penguins, something, you know, something a little cute. And then I do enjoy using this for like, I don't really use Photoshop anymore, or Lightroom, because I don't want to pay a subscription anymore. So I went with Photomator for editing photos, lifetime subscription, lifetime or lifetime subscription, one-time purchase, and you don't need a subscription to use just as capable photo editing tools on Photomator. So if you're tired of Photoshop and Adobe and you use Apple products, Photomator on Mac, iPad, iPhone, to me is a really good and capable photo editing uh, app that can pretty much get basic stuff done like you would do on Lightroom. And then for like Photoshop, I guess, for example, I would just put some pictures of my cat on here and draw cute little things and sayings or let's see. Um, or take a picture of my dog and have him say some thoughts. So yeah, that's my dog, Loki, and that's him with a thought bubble that I drew on Procreate because you can just put an image on here and draw over it and it's, it's fun. So that's one thing that I use for the Apple Pencil. I mean, journaling too and writing on good notes, writing down things to do on good notes with the Apple Pencil. So yeah. That's one way you could utilize the Apple Pencil on there. Um, gaming on here. I don't really do gaming much on here, but I've tried Call of Duty on here, utilizing 20 fr 120 frames per second. Very fun if you use it now and then. And on 11 inch, if you're gaming, it's probably easier on your thumbs to navigate on the screen. Uh, obviously, you're gonna miss out on that mini LED quality. I'm really hoping when they come out with an 11 inch iPad Pro that the mini LED will be on all pro devices and not just stuck with the bigger models because that's not really fair. Will it raise the price? Sure, but I'll happily buy 
of iPad Pro at a higher price if it has mini LED. But they are talking about using OLED screens now, so hopefully the new iPad Pros at every size will utilize OLED and you don't feel left out and have FOMO for getting the 11 inch because you don't want that big of a screen. So yeah. Um, other than that, man, iPad Pro 11 inch, if you are a student, you can use it obviously if you're just doing basic things like desktop apps safari is capable um, i'm not sure if they use blackboard anymore i think it's called brightspace at least that's what we used when i was in college recently was brightspace blackboard you can still use it you can still use microsoft word on here google docs google sheets excel powerpoint you can do all that on here just fine will you have some limits because there are applications on the ipad sure can you get the job done? Yes, easily. No doubt about it. Should you get a MacBook Pro or an iPad Pro? It depends on what you want to do. If you're some a photographer and that's all you do, iPad's pretty great. I mean, you can use Photoshop on here, Lightroom, edit photos. All you got to do is get a USB-C to SD card adapter to put your SD card files on here and get stuff done, upload it on the iCloud drive. You're good to go. File management on here is not that great, but <laughs> yeah, it's not great. File management on here is still pretty poor, but hopefully that gets better in time. Even with iOS 17, I don't know, man. File management, I hope one day gets better and be on an Android level because it's pretty bad. I don't, I'm not, I'm not a fan. Even with iOS 17 or I, iPad OS 17, I'm not too keen about it, but I don't know. Maybe we'll get better in time, maybe. But yeah, uh, word processing, Microsoft, Google, you can get it done. Photoshop Lightroom, you can get it done. For videos, they finally do have Final Cut Pro on here and I've tried it. I was gonna make a video about it, but I don't think it's for me. It's kind of limited. You can do stuff that's only featured on the iPad Pro, such as like drawing on the videos with the Apple Pencil. That's very cool. But I think it's limited to, what is it? You can only, correct me in the comments if I'm wrong but you can only upload files from Mac to the iPad, but you can't upload from the iPad to the Mac or something like that. You can't transfer from either or. You'll be stuck on the iPad. And if you have an iPad Pro that has a uh, low storage, keep that in mind because Final Cut Pro does utilize a lot of storage. So yeah, there's that. And they said you can't work off an external hard drive yet. I'm sure maybe with a software update, they'll allow that. So there's that to consider. But yeah, there's Adobe, no, there's a DaVinci Resolve. I have not tried yet on this actually. So I might think about downloading that, but I don't know if I have to pay for it. That's the question. But DaVinci Resolve is something that you can do on here that I haven't tried yet. And I'm probably going to think about trying. Um, let's see, they have Logic Pro. I haven't tried that on here yet, but I'm sure with the iPad, there's going to be some limits, but and also some exclusive features just for the iPad. So we'll see they do with that later on with software updates with final cut pro it is a subscription unfortunately there's no lifetime purchase for it on the ipad pro so there's that to consider if that's what you want to do so being a student you're doing basic things and this will be great for you uh if you want a smaller screen if you want something smaller than a 13 inch macbook air there's this and if you want that touch screen capability that's important to you ipad pro because they won't bring it to the mac I don't think they ever will, because if they did, what's the point in selling these iPads, honestly? So yeah, that was my thoughts on the iPad Pro 11 inch with the Gear 5 Luffy in the front. Let me know what you think in the comments below about the iPad Pro 11 inch. Do you guys have one in the M2 version? Any version, how's it working out for you? Do you prefer the 11 inches or the 12.9 inches? Let me know in the comments below what your thoughts are. Let's talk. Thanks for watching. If you liked it, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. Stay tuned for more. Thanks.